Daniel is uh, has always been fascinated by security. He has been with Microsoft Switzerland for five years and is working as a threat management TSP. I think at some point you have to explain what a TSP is, Daniel. Um, as you will see in his presentation, he evangelizes a holistic security approach to address today's and future security risks. So, Daniel, please. So, Robert, thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, to make it clear, TSP stands for Technical Solution Professional. However, we changed that title already. So that's what we do often. So um, I don't care about titles. Uh, what I do at Microsoft, I care about um, security and compliance topics around our modern workplace infrastructure. So everything that has to do with uh, this um, collaborative um, yeah, workspaces that we have, that's where I am in and I help customers to understand what we can do and how do things would work. So, um, yeah, so let me start. So one thing that I see very often is uh, that we have different discussions with um, customers about what kind of encryption can I do when I use services like Office 365? And um, I always have to explain what possibilities we have and also what are the, um, the benefits and maybe also the, um, the other side of the mail. So what we offer when it comes to types of encryption key, we have what we call a Microsoft managed key. So in a Microsoft managed key, we create keys for customers. Um, and we use these, kind of, these keys to encrypt data for the customer. So every, of course, every customer has his own key, but we do the whole operational thing with, with the, those keys. So customers don't, doesn't have to care about it. Hey, they can just use it and that's fine. Um, what's important is if a customer is using these kind of keys, there is no impact um, on our service. So all the functions that um, customers expect, they would work, so there is no issue there. However, there is also the opportunity of using the a bring your own key concept. And to make it really clear, um, the goal of a bring your own key concept is always um, when you have specific regulations, which says, okay, um, you have to manage your own key. You have to have the control over that key. That's where you can use this bring your own key thing. Um, it helps then to say, okay, um, I created a key. I, I'm in the control of the key and I always are able to um, make that key unavailable for Microsoft. So this is what we can offer here. Again, if you use this functionality, there is no impact on the service. You can all use all the functionalities because what we do is you transfer this key to the Microsoft data center in our Azure key vaults. So these are uh, our software or hardware-based HTMS. And then you configure the service to use those keys to encrypt the data. However, the keys are in the data center of Microsoft, of course. The last thing is then a hold your own key concept. Also double key encryption. Double key encryption is just um, one of the implementations we have uh, for this hold your own key concept. Um, this is when you really stay in control of the key. Um, so only you are have the control over the key and Microsoft is not able to read this data. However, and we have to understand that that also has some impacts on the service. So the impacts could be that we are not able to scan a file on for malware, for example, because what we see is just a bunch of yeah, bits and bytes, and we cannot really scan this information. Or we are not able to do an index of that file so that you can search for that and you find the information. That's just something that you have to be aware of. And um, however, all of the three capabilities are available and you have to understand when you want to use which kind of functionality. So um, what about the encryption layers that we provide? So of course, we talk here about data and transit, data at rest. So the first thing that we do is uh, when we have a communication between a client and our data center, there is always TLS encryption in place. So it's TLS 1.2. Uh, which makes sure that, um, that the whole communication between your client and the data center is encrypted. 
Of course, the same is also available for inside communication in the data center or if a data center replicates information to another data center. So we have normally this active-active um, um, concept that if you store data in one data center, it will also replicate it to another data center. So if something went wrong, we can go for the other data center to um, have still our data. So here, everything is um, transport labor. The other thing is then disk encryption. So we use BitLocker as a disk encryption system. So we encrypt all the storage systems that we have with uh, BitLocker. And we recommend the same thing on the client side. So um, it, it can be another technology, that's fine. It, it, there is no need to be um, BitLocker, but um, we recommend that you use a technology that encrypts on the disk level um, the data. So if you have some cached information or cached emails or so, that they are still encrypted there. Um, if you ask me what we do when we have a Linux box, that's the encrypt what we use. The next layer that we have is then the service encryption. So what we do is we encrypt the service. So if you use a service like um, Office 365 or let's say SharePoint or Exchange Online, all those data are encrypted with a specific key for the customer. The goal here is to make sure that customer A is not able to access customer B. So that's, that's the main goal that we have here. By default, we use here a Microsoft key. So that means um, we encrypt the data, we handle the key, you don't have to care about anything. However, there is an opportunity that you say, okay, I want to go for my own key. I want to use my own, bring your own key. And that's then the service called here is customer key. And in the customer key, key scenario, you create either the key on-prem um, on your HMS system, or you do that directly in Azure Key Vault. Um, if the key is created, it will be transferred to the Azure Key Vault. And then as I said, you configure the system to use those keys to encrypt the data. So this is what we can do on the service level. The next level that we have is then content encryption. And content encryption is when our technology information protection technology came in. So there are two names for that, Azure Information Protection or Microsoft Information Protection. Um, there are different, but make it easy. It's the same as information protection. Uh, what we do here is we encrypt content, um, um, let's say a, a Word document or a PowerPoint file, and we, we can classify the information and also encrypt the information if needed. Here you can choose what you want to use and um, you can choose that pair um, classification level. So you can say, okay, I want to have for the not so important one, MS key is absolutely okay for me. However, for the real top secret ones, I want to use double key encryption. Double key encryption, and, it, and Hansrudy will tell you more about that, go a little bit deeper in the technology part. However, what double key encryption is, that's the replacement for hold your own key that we had um, for the previous version of Azure Information Protection. In double key encryption, we use two keys. One is a bring your own key that is stored in, in the Azure Key Vault. So that's the, the first key that we use. The second key is then on um, the secure system or uh, from another system. And so it means that if you want to have access to those documents, to those information, you always need to have access to both keys. So this means um, if from a Microsoft point of view, we always have only encrypted information. Again, as I said before, um, we would not be able to scan uh, this information or um, do an index of this information to say, hey, here is what you looked for. This is a document, however, it's encrypted because we have no access to this information. That's the goal of double key encryption. Um, <clears throat> when we come to the Microsoft information protection, um, here is what we can do. So the goal here is always that uh, it's, it's something that we can use to discover information. So um, the information protection gives you the ability to scan your environment, to look about what kind of data I have in my environment, 
to understand which of these data are critical, which, are, which of these data are your crown jewels that you have to protect. The problem that we see today is that a lot of our customers have um, information, but about 80% of this information is dark data. So this, we store this data since years. Nobody really knows what it is. That's where Discover comes in. Discover is able to scan all this data in the cloud and on premise and gives you a view what kind of data you have. When you have this, this understanding, you can start to classify. So um, you can do this either manually uh, so that people, when they create a new document or um, they access a document, they can say what kind of classification that information should have. And you're absolutely free to define that, what kind of um, information you give. The, the main idea is here that we store the sensitivity label with the document so that it does not mean it, it, it's independent if that's uh, if that's um, will be stored on a Microsoft environment or anywhere else. Um, the other thing that you can do, you can also do automation. So for example, if you have um, a document which has a keyword in and you say, okay, if that keyword is in that file, uh, we have to protect this information as top secret, then you can do that um, directly. Um, so you can either propose this classification or apply the classification directly. Depending on the importance of the information or on the classification level, you decide if you also want to protect information. And when it comes to protection, it's always about encrypting information so that you can guarantee that only allowed persons have, can have access to the information and also to do um, information rights management. You can also say, what are you able to do with this information? Can you print the information? Can you edit the information? These kinds of things. Um, in both cases, classification and protection is always on the file itself. So from a protection point of view, it's completely independent if you store that on uh, OneDrive for Business or you store the information in um, Dropbox or whatever, it's independent. So you can use, so the, the information is protected in any way. And then at the end, the whole monitoring thing where you see who tries to open information, who has um, who has classified information. Maybe you, you missed something because someone did the, the wrong classification. These are things that you can do with the monitoring. That's the whole goal of this information protection. And we will see that um, Hannes will show us more about what we can do here and how the whole thing works. Uh, one discussion that I always have with customers is, okay, but what do you have to use when? And this is just, don't get too much on these numbers, these, these percent numbers. It was just to try to, um, try to understand what kind of level we need. What we normally see in a custom environment, there is a lot of data that you can store in the cloud in an unencrypted format because they are not very critical. There are some data that you need to have this Microsoft key and you always need, or you need this Microsoft key normally if you have use cases where you want to control who can have access to this data. Um, could be an internal department, you have um, um, some data, HR data, for example, which you say, okay, these are only available for HR or um, you have want to collaborate with partners because you build a new technology uh, and you want to make uh, want to guarantee that only the specific person from the partner can have access to this data. Here, Microsoft key is normally absolutely enough. The bring your own key is again when you have specific regulations which says, okay, you need to be in control over that key. That's what you can use for the bring your own key scenario. And double key encryption is this top secret information. That's always then when you can't trust the provider. And here it's important that we have a solution that we also can protect those data and can make sure that those data are not, um, cannot be accessed by the provider. And I have seen a lot of customers which struggled here because that meant, okay, we need to have HSS, HSS 
uh, infrastructure, we need to manage those. We need to do key rollover. Uh, when we do something wrong, data are gone. And here, I think it's really helpful to have partner like Securisys, which will provide that as a service. So you're able to use this kind of information. You can use this kind of a technology, but you will not blocked or not stopped here. Good. The last thing here, and this is more about the integration part. Um, I think encryption is great, but encryption is always as good as the integration that you have. Um, so, and I don't want to go through all of that thing, but I think uh, it's important to give you some understanding how information protection or Microsoft information integrates in other technologies. So for one thing is um, we also support PDF. So Adobe PDF is something that we can natively protect um, again with the Microsoft information protection technology. So you use the same um, classification labels, you apply the same classification label and you protect also PDF information. Uh, one other thing that we have seen is um, the cross-platform thing. So um, one of the first, um, so we started with the Windows platform, of course, um, that's typical for Microsoft. However, uh, we also saw that there is a need on other platforms. And today we support uh, the Windows, the Mac, iOS, and Android platform, at least for reading information. Uh, in some cases, you can also encrypt the information on those platforms. But um, it was important for us that we can that we are able to read the information so that we are um, no matter which device you use to access the data, you have access to the information. Also with the web apps, so the web app would also work. Um, we also changed a little bit. We started with a plugin. Um, this is no longer necessary today. This technology is natively integrated in the Office client, and you can use this Office client. Uh, the other thing that is important for us is that we uh, have integrated that in Cloud App Security, that it's our CASP solution. And the idea here is that um, you can have information that are classified um, in your environment and someone is trying to store that on um, a cloud service, which is absolutely allowed. So he is able to access that cloud service and you want to um, give him the ability to do that. Um, however, in the way when he stores the information on the cloud service, the information will be protected by uh, Microsoft information protection. And then you can make sure that um, this person has access to the data. However, if that's my personal OneDrive and I will leave the company, I'm account will be disabled. I no longer have access to the information. If still, if I, they're still on my drive, that's okay, but I cannot open them. So that's one of the things that we can do here. And I think that's also an important one, uh, in, including that in conditional access. So conditional access, for example, also in combination with cloud of security, uh, we can provide some scenarios where we say, hey, you can have access to this data on SharePoint, for example. However, and you can edit the information, you can do everything. However, if you start to download the information, that will be blocked because we understand that this is critical information or you are able to download, but then they will be protected so that only you can have access to the, to the information. So you cannot share it with someone else. So these are different scenarios that we can, uh, how we can provide these things. And yeah, I think I already, talked about most of that, maybe also the SDK. Um, that's always a question I got from my customers. Okay, what can we do if we want to integrate this technology also in other platforms? And here is, um, we have an SDK that we provide so that you can use this um, SDK for integration in other platforms. So that's something that is um, available for all the software developers, but also for you as a customer, if you want to have integration in some of the, in some of the other systems that you need. Good. And with that, I will just hand over to 